Sahara, uh, Celestia, again. Uh, we are producing these interviews in intervals, so we are going to say hello sometimes. <laughs> and so today we are going to continue uh, after we know that in England some people collect, uh, have this suffering or pain, I don't know if call it like this or how to call it, after the death of a queen that was there 70 years. In the... So it means a lot for the people because they knew someone and I mean it's a symbol. I know it's a symbol. I never really believe in this kind of things, but uh, now that I try to have more empathy with the collective, I understand that is some suffering, some pain, something, and well, I just. We just didn't do the interview the day of the funeral <laughs> to respect some beliefs. So um, I hope uh, everybody is okay uh, about these new beginnings. It's going to be difficult for sure. <laughs> it's not going to, to be easy. Not change are easy in the world. But the most important is that you, the ones that are watching this video, focus in yourself and remember that the circumstance, circumstance outside are, are always going to change and maybe there are going to be very bad circumstances, but the light in yourself that is coming from the high, from the universe, that is never going to change and if you try to focus in there you are going to be fine you are going to, to keep your peace so these therapies with sahara are mostly about that mm -hmm. that you remember your inner strength and your inner light uh, so now i'm going to ask her what is a uh, the spirit release that we was speaking the last time, implants, energies, and how, I mean, what is this? How do you work with that? And what did you need to release as spirit? <clears throat> Thank you for that introduction. Um, um, it's a vast area. Um, and how I approach this is, it is an opportunity, everything is an opportunity to uh, transform and um, releasing is enabling any being which is energy to evolve and um, grow and that means we do that when we're resonating in a light way. And so <clears throat> there are many dimensions. So to kind of put the, the um, you might hear my dog <laughs> there. Uh, she's fine. <laughs> she wants me to play with her. That's what that is about. Um, so we have the physical. So we have, um, so what is, what occurs in the physical dimension, what we can call the 3D, the same rules apply in any dimension, um, three, four, five, into infinity. And so what we attract to us, to ourselves, can um, to be affect us negatively or positively. And we have connections and communications with all sorts of energies um, across all the dimensions. And so we're in the physical and we can have uh, communication and energy exchange with other beings and other energies in other dimensions and they with us. Um, 
And different beings have different energies and therefore different intentions. In the, the uh, reality that we're living in, uh, we are in a physical body that has um, vast energy spaces that extend outwardly and inwardly. And um, so say we have a, a germ, a cold, and it, it, it moves around in the space externally. And then we'll, um, and if we're susceptible to that, or <laughs> we have an agreement in a way to have an experience of that, having that, having a cold, the energy that, that resonance, the germ will come in and then gradually come and settle into the physical body. It will sit in the, uh, the aura first, the lighter resonance field, and then will come in. Um, so the same is with, with emotion is an energy. So when we walk into a room, we will sense uh, if somebody's had an argument with somebody else, you'll feel it in the, the environment. It still hangs around, it has a charge. So I'm just giving a bit of a background there just to kind of we got the same sort of understanding on how we are in the different layers and dimensions. Because when uh, we go into talking about spirit release, um, we're still talking about um, energies and beings. And um, so we can have conversations and energetic exchanges and communication with different beings. If they're lighter in resonance, it is the energy flows through. It doesn't hang around. It doesn't have a negative intention to cause dis-ease. But um, different beings will have a different intention. So the denser vibration energy fear, anger, um, revenge, um, all those, uh, it, it's more in the fear resonance, it's more, it's denser, it, it gets stuck. When we're in fear, we contract, our energy field um, contracts and it's literally denser. When we're lighter, we are, ha we are more spacious. We literally hold more space and our aura expands. So when we're in the flow of lighter emotions, energy, which is love, laughter, compassion, patience, that naturally flows. The energy moves. The energy of the emotion moves through our body and flows. When we um, have an, an energy that is fear it literally gets stuck in us it can doesn't flow through us so if we have trauma and we are not held in an event a traumatic event that uh, reaction in us triggers a negative emotion like fear or anger um, the flight fight freeze response and if we're not held in that experience like if we go to like if we're a little child and we fall over and uh we start crying and the parent just says oh stop crying don't be such a don't in in britain it'd be uh, don't be such a wuss like if you're a little boy don't be a cry baby pull yourself together if you get that you're you, the upset is held in you start feeling shame you start feeling that you've done something wrong you're not allowed to cry you're not held you feel the world's dangerous it's you get you get that so that gets stuck inside you don't and it's that which attracts an energy being to us okay that likes that energy that upset which comes from trauma it can be another human being who likes that drama, who likes to be in that kind of resonance, get into arguments, or it can be another being that's in the um, fourth dimension that's not got a physical body, 
but wants to sit in there that wants to likes that it's like oh i'll sit in that person and cause more havoc and i like that energy and i'll then attach myself to that energy and make make myself at home there Mm. that is the fundamental why i needed to explain that is people who have come to me and um do still occasionally come to me and say oh i've been cursed um or my my family members being cursed or i've got an entity being um it's being bothered in my house um can you remove it please remove it and i will say um have you had a trauma has there been a change in your life has there been an incident has there um have you um, lost a job, a divorce, or has there been an unresolved trauma even earlier on in your childhood? If you can't think of anything, it'll be in a past life. You need to solve the dis-ease internally, the emotional energy that you're holding that is stuck, that didn't, wasn't, wasn't held, wasn't resolved, that you're still unconsciously still holding on to you need to clear that when that clears your vibration rises you are not holding that to attract that so so people have come to me in the past when i was more doing this kind of work and often they would say i've been to so many shamans and healers and it keeps coming back Mm -hmm. now i've come to you and i will say well you need to sort out the issue which is the trauma, mm-hmm. that simple. It's that simple. If you don't sort out the cause of it, it will keep coming back or another being will come back. The same thing like a woman or a man, you know, keep, go, keep coming back together even though it's dysfunctional, their relationship is dysfunctional because they've got that attraction. They've not resolved the wounding in each, within each other. And they keep wanting to play out the same drama to heal the initial trauma. That's why, you know, uh, women will stay in domestic violence relationships. People go, why did she not leave? And I know there's other layers to it, but um, yes. So that's, it's, it's, uh, uh, that's the long, (laughs) that's the uh, spirit release. So um, for me, all beings originated from light because divine source god goddess created all life and even the beings that have forgotten that or are in a distortion of that in a denser vibration of that i believe that there is a vibration within everything that still holds that light even if it's really dimmed or you know sort of calmed off and shut down that that essence still wants to return to light so whenever i've worked with anybody to release an energy being that's attached in their field externally or more internally in their body always given say you you have the choice i remind them this being energy so i mean about this so you say that sometimes it's divorces or violence in the house or things like that. Um, I have a, a little question about infidelity, well, what people call infidelity, um, or what people call love, romantic love. Uh, is there a spirit also that can be the one that gets in love with the person and then it can be like another spirit do you think it's this i mean because the person is taken by certain vibrations so then that vibration is the one that gets in love with someone but in reality i don't know if i explain myself um and also I mean, if you have the will, you always can love someone, yes? If you come from your heart, even if it's not attraction, even if it's like very hard, you always can have 
a partner and love and love your wife or your husband i mean everything else is excuses you know like you say oh it's because the other person was more attractive or i have more empathy with the other person and i cannot really like i i don't like this person anymore so all these kind of attitudes all these kind of blaming the others are also a spirit energies inside us or or does it have anything to be with this that you are explaining it? um we are made up of mind body spirit and part of our journey is being able to tune in and be able to listen to the different aspects of ourselves and i think there's that confusion because we've been numbed to the different aspects so sometimes we don't know what what uh, aspect of ourselves is speaking so people will come to me and say how can i uh, tune into my intuition how do i know it is my intuition how do i trust myself exactly. you know if we can't trust ourselves it's we're, we're lost we feel lost mm -hmm. how do i know um this being is of the light if i can't trust myself or trust my intuition or trust my guidance how do i know um uh how i feel how do i can i discern what is um not real it's people will come to me and go well how, if you have a guide speaking to you, how do you know it's not your imagination? Um, so we're off, we are very, we a lot of human beings are um, removed from their physical body. And in our physical body is how we sense and feel. We have intuition and we have like gut intuition. I feel it in my gut. Um, they're also removed. We, I call it like the frozen heart syndrome where we a lot of us might not have only had glimpse glimmers of what is um, unconditional love and so if you know people could say oh i only i did such and such because um i've i've been possessed for instance or um i've been cursed or um but i would say again this entity or being, if you are cursed, um, is an energy and is only vibrating and resonating within your field because there's something unresolved in you. If we go back to the trauma. What have you experienced that you're holding on to unconsciously that you haven't resolved, which is causing you to act like this? And you can, you can blame it on this that and the other but it but it is that is what sovereignty is and i say it's on um, when we that's why we called we call there's this term awakening and ascension and it's awakening it's waking up becoming conscious mm -hmm. to all of ourselves all our aspects being aware to be able to discern oh this is my programming in my mind this pattern oh i'm a, i keep thinking that and not getting lost in those patterns those programs which might be from ancestral parents culture oh and that thinking triggers an emotion in me which then i believe is true and then i act on it so part of awakening and ascension is becoming um self-aware and being able to observe oh i'm having that thought now and observing it so you're not dissociating you're not be, you're not spacing out you are observing yourself having the experience and that's called mindfulness oh i'm having that pain i'm not being lost in the pain i am not the pain i'm having those thoughts I am not those thoughts. So this is like healthy parenting would be like when a little toddler goes, I hate you. They're feeling it. 
and that moment they feel they hate you know they're so angry and that's how they can kind of word it but they are not the hate it's, they aren't hateful and a lot of the um, dis-ease that humanity has is by attaching to the thought attaching to the emotion and that's compression attachment freedom love is spacious and non-attachment but it doesn't mean you don't care it means it's in a way compassionate detachment is buddhism is, is all about that yeah. being able to be observing yeah about that I, I mean i am working with a teacher that say that mindfulness can be dangerous not duality because if you don't work with your trauma then you have your trauma there and you are working with mindfulness and avoiding the reality through my mindfulness so you have to be very careful just i mean you are already telling me work with yourself yes observe and be true to yourself yes but mostly of the time we take this no duality of mindfulness like oh i am in mindfulness i am positive and i not receive any negative things please i am in my positive environment and everything is positive <laughs> good vibes for everybody yes and then it's like you no. yeah going there that's not me. possible <laughs> that that's i would call that spiritual escapism because if you bump into something or something falls on your foot you drop something you trip it hurts yes. it's it's, we need the pain to tell us to don't put a hand in the fire or uh, we've been hurt. Mm -hmm. The thing is not becoming attached to it, but allow that expression. It, you would go, ouch. But the problem is like how the example I use of the, of the child falling down and the, and the parent going, don't be such a worse and don't be a cry baby. That's what the problem is. And then we take on the programming and say, oh, We've got to be love and light, 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 and don't have it, don't have anger, don't have fear. We those are responses we need to protect ourselves. Exactly. Yes. You know, to really kind right. of go, no, that is not okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that I'm being violent. It's saying I'm putting a boundary up and I'm and that is not okay. No. Um, it might be I have to, you know, sometimes with Gemma, because she's my dog, she'll be like so excited and full of, you know, she's got the programming running in her head is like, ah, she goes on, she's a rescue. So she goes into alert, alert, alert. Sometimes I have to like get through the programming. She's barking. If she, if, if, if it gets that far, I've, I've got various strategies I now put into place so that she doesn't go into, but she can get triggered if a, an environment situation and so in those circumstances, I have to yell, <laughs> not because I'm being violent, but to get through the noise because she's barking. <laughs> go, Stop that now or, you know, something like that. But I've learned ways to stop before that happens. But sometimes something will happen. And that's parenting. That's taking care. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, boundaries are good sometimes. And... I, I, even if they are hard to to, to put it, I mean, it's, it's good for your heart and for your well-being. Yes, it's, it's very healthy <laughs> sometimes. Uh, okay, so now uh, trans channeling and channeled guidance. <laughs> We're going through all all the different. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so let's take a breath after all talking about that. And, and I just want to be aware of any people watching this. These are like very potent, powerful subjects. What we've just covered, you might have got triggered or feel emotion or confusion. It's a, it's a, it's a triggering subject. So um, do take care of yourself. And I just wanted to say how on um, before I go on to trans channeling, um, uh, this energy management is really important on both these subjects. Uh -huh. So it's a good bridge. Uh, it's, it comes under energy management, which boundaries is one of them. So uh, if you are frightened or concerned that you think you might have an attachment or 
need assistance on that. There are various things you can do and um, you just want to quickly go through is you pray, work with Archangel Michael or Mel Melchizedek, um, connect with your heart and uh, loving vibration and seek assistance on clearing trauma. You can go to a psychotherapist if you want. You can go to any different healing modality, but somebody who's going to do, sometimes it's called shadow work. Um, if you've done that, if you've done a lot of trauma work or in the process of doing that, and it then it, this is revealed, then yes, go, go and seek somebody who does spirit release work. Um, but there are various tools you can do to um, feel safe and maintain healthy functioning while you resolve this issue. So that is grounding, um, boundaries, affirmations, prayers to our, our, um, Archangel Michael or Melchizedek, um, saging your environment, salt water baths <laughs> um, there, there's quite a lot you can actually do to keep clearing the energy your own field you, your own space where you're you're um living that does actually assist to keep the energy moving um if you are feeling depressed with it which often can happen um uh because of the energy the situation the feelings um Get yourself moving physically is really important. Get yourself walking and get the energy moving in your body. It really helps. Anyway, I was just wanted to kind of just say that in case somebody, this subject uh, yes. will be there. So, um, which ties into, uh, did you want to say anything? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, I was thinking in that the release of spirit, uh, again, I was thinking in, in the uh, houses and these kind of things. So like I feel sometimes in my house it's cold and I feel, I see sometimes uh -oh. spirits like running. So yes, I buy sage and, and I begin a ritual and they leave, they, they left, you know, yeah. but sometimes they come yeah. back, sometimes they come back. So it's a, it's a place where I usually have to clean and clean them all the time then well when i've gone and done space clearing i always check whether there's a portal okay. a doorway for the energies that if they keep coming through there's uh, an access point often so if you keep getting this and they might be also be drawn because you're holding light and you're wanting to bring in light and connection to light and you're you're uh, you're interested in healing or you're a healer so um, that will be the number one. Whenever I went to um, house clearing, I, I checked the space for portals. And that's a whole nother subject. Yes. So. <laughs> well, I've still got the trans channeling that you asked me. We haven't even got there. No, but I, so. I, mean, I mean, it's interesting. So we maybe continue with this because it's related. Yes, if you want. Yeah. And later we can go to the other yeah yeah yes yes because it's about it's kind of a going where, where the flow of the conversation is yes um it's interesting because somebody um i posted something on facebook and a group i think it was star seed awakening and somebody asked me um what what they had a reading and uh, they'd been told from the reading that they were a gatekeeper and they didn't know what that meant mm -hmm. so um i i had there were two issues, not issues, there were two um, subjects or issues, you could say, within what they said. Number one was, um, what is a gatekeeper? She was asking. Number two is, she didn't know what that meant, she, which is, she was given a reading. Okay. So, gatekeeper is linked to portal. That's why I'm raising this. Um, so, the shamans <laughs> shamans uh, of uh, indigenous peoples all over the world before the major religions and tibetan buddhist buddhism did include shamanism um 
so that that's about that uh, that aspect of uh, one of the major you could call it Buddhism a religion or not I don't know <laughs> it's not getting into philosophy but anyway shamans would do would be have a role have the role of of many of these terms that we use in contemporary spirituality a shaman would be a healer and a gatekeeper a grid keeper um they would funk they would you they would um and some shamans would have more of a focus on one area than the other but they will often um have capacity capabilities gift skills to do do it do it all basically from my experience so um a portal um is uh is a gateway mm -hmm. and hence the term gatekeeper so many people um are being called they don't know why they might be called to different parts of the planet the earth um, places and they keep being called to go there and so sometimes they then through their awakening or ascension suddenly realize okay we keep being called to these places because they're powerful energies they're doorways between different dimensions and yeah. resonances and that's what a portal is um so there's different ways you can um, pick that up. I have a natural sense of being able to sense things, but people can use uh, like um, pendulum. Uh, I think you call it pendulum, uh, uh, dowsing rods. They they're just means to tune into your intuition and your. Um, but you can, um, if you've got your third eye switched on, which I have, I I I don't use pendulums and they <laughs> get in the way actually. Um, you literally it's it's a bit like uh like a heat um like when you're on a road and it, it, it you get the heat sort of uh the, the, like sort of quivery shimmery kind of sort of thing it's kind of a bit like that um so um often in in houses have got a lot of disturbance a lot of en energies that are a lot of beings there'll be a portal there'll be a, it's like a highway <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And the more beings that do that, they create a, a, a highway. They like they, then they're making an energy resonance. So then more beings will know that there's a highway, and they they say, "Oh, there's a highway there. I'll just go there." <laughs> they they're creating an energetic pathway, but because it's your space, and because um, it, it, it's your space, so you can go. No, you shut the door, close it. And you bring in the highest intention. You know, I don't want a, a, a great big motorway, a spirit motorway through my, my sitting room. And you have the choice um, and the energy and um, consciousness to say, I'm closing that. No, thank you very much. Find somewhere else you want to go. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I can see about it, but uh, once I feel like myself my body was the portal also oh yeah I, I feel yeah i feel like certain people was coming through me you know and i changed the voice and i was like doing different things and i feel them inside me and i was like this is my imagination of what is happening you know but oh, people yeah. that it was very close to that that and people that already that was one day or two days that you know i feel it inside me and i was like what is going on <laughs> you know and right. this was weird so uh right now is slow is i don't feel it so much but it was one time that it was like super like uh, uh very i mean very activated and was very mostly with famous people's people i feel it with I mean, certainly was like this Brad Pitt inside me. And I was like, what he's doing here? I mean, and certainly was this singer, another singer and another actress. And I was like, what is all these people inside me? I mean, one at the time, yes. I was like, what is going on, you know? Uh, this is mean that I have, I was opening in the portal or was something going on there? I'm not sure, just like. Well, what comes up for me it, with, and, and, and tuning in to what you're saying 
is that, well, firstly, yes, we can be. I had that experience when I had a vision that there were pyramids in Bosnia. I didn't know there were pyramids in Bosnia. There are pyramids in Bosnia. I went and to the physically 3D in this reality, uh, traveled to Bosnia. And when I went in the sun pyramid, there's tunnels underneath and you can go in. All these uh, galactic beings are being caught in a time loop, which you could call like, that's what ghosts are or hum no, human beings who um, have an abrupt ending in their life. They're not ready to go on to the light. They can create um, a, like, a t like a time loop or their own reality to live in their consciousness. And so there were a lot of galactic beings caught in trapped in their sort of this time loop. And they all started going through me. They would go through into my solar plexus and the solar is sun and then go off. So they weren't hanging around. They were just using me as, as, a, as a gateway. And uh, that's when I realized, okay, I'm actually, that, that's, this is a thing that um, healers, light workers, whatever you want to, we're, we're, we're be, many of us are beyond labels now. <laughs> um, there's things that are like happening that are beyond what, you know, I, I, it's all of it or none of it now. But um, I realized, oh, that's what's happening. They weren't harming me. They, my higher self soul had called me to there in order to assist these beings to move on because part of my soul vibration is galactic. For you, what I was getting was there, there's an uh, energy being that was using these images to present to in a way is just that was saying, oh, oh, this is Brad Pitt. But my intuition is saying that it wasn't Brad Pitt or these famous people. Okay. It was an intention and energy trying to communicate and use those references. Um, either to mask or to set, you know, to kind of put a form to. It also could be that um, your intuition was putting a shape to this energy saying it's it's Brad Pitt, it's this. Oh, okay. There is so it's like, okay, so you were, <laughs> because the, the resonances that are not in the physical will use metaphor and symbol to communicate. They don't, they're not, um, in a way, if like my friend from years back said, if life was a dream, what would it mean? And we are walking and living in a dream. This whole, the funeral of, of Queen Elizabeth, my goodness, if that, it has many layers to it, but the amount of symbolism and metaphor and ceremony, it was laden with it. And the, the the society culture not questioning of that really loving it <laughs> you know the pomp the ceremony i mean the queen was uh, her um coffin was um moved along on a a, a big gun thing it was it was a, a cannon and then surrounded by soldiers and they look to me, quite extraordinary <laughs> with their big hats and feathers and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But they actually, they, they would have um, been active soldiers. A lot of them, have, for instance, been to Iraq. Wow, okay. They're not just dressing up. They are actually um, active soldiers. So, but, so all the like the, the amount of feathers that are in the hats, they were golden, they were eagle feathers, whether they've got three or two, how they walk. I mean, the layers to it will go, it goes on and on and on. So we already live in um, a world where there's so much symbolism, which is that washes over us with us either consciously or unconsciously not being aware of it. And so what you're waking up to is all of that. <laughs> and, and it does take a little bit of time, practice, to, do, to understand when we get these messages, you know, what okay. is it going? Is it really Brad Pitt and this and this and this? Or is it my higher self or my intuition telling me there's an energy that's 
tapping into me or I'm tapping into it, trying to communicate. What is this communicating? So I feel with all this, which we are learning and exploring, having an open, curious mind to not jumping to thinking it, it's this, that or the other, but allowing ourselves to observe and be curious. Oh, wonder, what does this feel like? What does my intuition feel like? Oh, why is it happening on Sundays only? <laughs> why, <laughs> you know, it's just really being able to observe okay. the time of this when it happened, were there any other triggers? It's observation. Mm -hmm. It's being able, and, and so when we learn, for instance, when somebody starts to learn to be uh, psychic or do psychic readings, one of the, the tips is when you start learning, it's opening up, opening up to, and this is all very relevant. We call it psychic awareness, but it's our natural sensitivity. We will get a metaphorical symbolic image. So if you're doing like a practice, you're reading off somebody, you will get um, like an image, like, a, I don't know, a vase, a glass vase or a dragonfly. And you'll go, what on earth has got that, that got to do with that person? I don't know. But you allow yourself to be curious. Uh, the dragonfly, it's green. Now it's changed to blue. Oh, that's interesting. And you just be with the curiosity and the inquiry like a child, not jumping to conclusions, not switching it off, not going, okay, it's a dragonfly, it means this, or I haven't got a clue what that is. Oh, that's my imagination, that's nonsense. <laughs> that's our ego mind wanting um, definitive, concrete, literal, logical, rational answers. But when we're working in the spiritual realm, our intuition, um, guides, et cetera, et cetera, it does not work that way. We, we, we want to open up to the irrational, the creative, the heart wisdom knowledge, um, our senses, how we, um, we start asking, was there... Is there a smell with that? Is there a sound with that? What does that bring up for me? What does that evoke for me? Um, oh, how interesting. So the dragonfly, where is it flying? Is it, is it, <laughs> you just start asking lots of questions. So when you have an expert, just ask as many questions, not in a, I want to know now what that means. <laughs> it's it's okay. more, oh, uh, okay, what's, what's this about then? What's this, what is this all about? I'm keep getting famous people coming in. What is that about? <laughs> famous, what does famous mean? Um, is it only men or is it women and men? Or is it a certain time? Or how do I feel when that happens? Is there a voice with that? Is there, how do, but mostly, how do I feel? How do I feel? Does it feel a lighter vibration? Do I feel agitated? Are they trying to say something? Could this be a being that's using this for to try and communicate something to me i don't know because because <laughs> i'm not you but that is how that is a key it's a very simple key but our ego mind is not used to we we're not <laughs> we're not we're not allowed in our society to ask questions we're actually told not to mm -hmm. we think we um we go to school don't we are we um don't we ask questions then? No, we're told what questions to ask. Exactly. Mostly we're told what to shut up and listen, is my experience. We're not, we, you know, be quiet, learn this, remember this. In my experience, school was about remembering certain information that they call facts. <laughs> Like, why have I got to learn this about, about history? Why am I not learning about that that happened then? You've got to remember that. When you remember that, you then have an exam and then you get a good mark when you remembered it. That's to me is not education. That's just being a robot and learning facts. Well, what they say is facts. I, I, I. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, thank you. Yes, yes, um, this is very helpful. Um, let's uh, now can we begin with the other or 
do we still oh, have trans channeling? <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe complete with that. So I will would like to um so obviously it's my experience, we're all very different and um uh, that, that's kind of I take that for granted but I thought I'd just put that in anyway for me the term channeling and even trans channeling is becoming extinct along with all these labels of starseed way shower gatekeeper healer etc but I do use them because it, um, it at least we're able to communicate <laughs> because there aren't any other words and we're up to to reference these these um, experiences etc and uh, we, we are still navigating within these parameters so <laughs> that's just a kind of a footnote um but um in in my so for instance i'll just my experience um i did do a healing course uh and i might have mentioned it before i don't know but um my experience on the healing course um i actually didn't want to do it <laughs> my uh higher self told me to do it um, and, and then the angels, I felt the angels, um, I found 500, 600 pounds worth of money rolled up, but it was drug money that paid for the part of the healing course. It was just lying on the street. I gave it into the police station and then went back a month later and, and claimed it as mine. <laughs> it sat there for a month and then I could claim it. And then it transmuted the energy. It was all very perfect. But anyway, so... Um, on that course, it's taught about opening and closing your chakras. So when we've been in the density vibration, which a lot of us have, we've had trauma a lot, our energy contracts in. And when our energy contracts in because we're holding fear or anger, we're not expansive and free and open. We go Ooh, like this. So in order to um, be a channel, which we're channeling all the time, we're always moving energy and feeding energy and responding to communication all around us. There's radio waves that we might not be hearing from our ears, but it's going on all the time and moving through our body all the time. Um, there's all sorts of different dimensions, energies that, are, that we move through but that we might not be sensing on the physical. Um, so the thing is that we're always channeling anyway. It's just waking up to that. Um, so on this course, they were saying, okay, you need to open up more. And you can do that by meditation, visualization, intention, open up, you know, through breath work, open up the chakras and the, imagine the chakras spinning more and the cut and there's color coming in and, 